Hi, I'm Andy McIndoo. I've been gardening all of my life, and I'm passionate about trees, shrubs, perennials, anything in fact which makes the garden look beautiful. I must say, I, I often neglect my lawn. It's, it's not something that I pay a lot of attention to. But I do recognise that if the lawn looks good, then the garden looks good. And if I'm pressed for time at a weekend, I make sure I mow the lawn, I do the edges, and I tidy things up. And in fact, that provides the set, really, for the rest of the garden. If your lawn looks good, your garden looks good. And that's got to be an incentive for all of us to pay it a bit more attention. When you think about it, you know, a lawn is its a plantation of thousands, if not millions, of individual grass plants. And they're all growing in really close proximity to one another. They're competing for light, air, moisture. And rather than giving them the attention that they really need, we walk on them, play on them, and we use it completely as a service. And, you know we really do need to pay a little bit more attention to those grass plants to keep them looking good throughout the year. 30 or 40 years ago, and certainly when I grew up, you know, the garden was all about a lawn which was a manicured square or rectangle of grass with straight edges and immaculately mown stripes. That was what every man aspired to. It was seen as an individual entity rather than part of the garden design, a structural element. Today, I think we're more relaxed about our lawns, and some are even very creative in their use in, in garden design. Um, curves have got softer, we use round lawns, we use interesting shapes, we use them as paths and ways through the garden. Ideally, a lawn, though, is still part of the two-thirds space in a garden rather than the one-third planting which makes up a pleasing garden picture. In many gardens today the lawn takes up too much space. It takes up far more than two-thirds of the garden and is perhaps surrounded by rather narrow borders. This means that the lawn is given excessive importance and it only highlights its shortcomings. The main reason for this is the gardener's reluctance to make those flower beds and borders large enough. Small beds and narrow borders mean that plants hang over the edge and they get in the way of whoever's doing the mowing. Have you ever experienced that yourself? You're just getting going on the mowing and these plants are hanging over the edge. What do you do? Do you stop and pull them back or do you go straight over them and chop their heads off? I think it all depends really, doesn't it, on the mood we're on at that moment in time. Those overhanging plants might look pretty, but all they do is make that mowing much more difficult. The shape of a lawn becomes all the more important in the garden in winter. Without the softening effect of foliage all around, then we can see it. And it, it should sit quite naturally within the space of the plot and work with the surrounding planting. Contrived lines and wavy edges are one of the crimes in garden design we feel that actually we should have these very undulating edges and all they do really is to, is to look fussy and spoil the lines. So a bit of planning makes all the difference. And sometimes, you know, you can transform a garden just by reshaping the lawn within the plot. Before considering a new lawn or if you're revamping an existing one, you need to think about its future use. What are you going to use it for? Is it going to be something just to look at? Are children going to play on it? Does it form a thoroughfare to other parts of the garden? Lawn turf, or sod, whether or not it's actually made of grass seed or you buy turf, is made up of a great variety of different types of grasses of different colour and texture and durability. 
special consideration needs to be made to certain areas of the garden, you know, where you've got shaded areas under trees or areas at entrances into the garden which are going to get excessive wear. Maybe we've got to think about the specific grass that we use in those areas. Fine grasses are not usually as hard wearing as coarser varieties. However, there's no point having a fine emerald green lawn that will be ruined by the first game of football. It's much better to have a reasonably fine lawn that is also durable if it gets wear and tear on occasions. A great deal of work has been done in breeding grass varieties that are resistant to wear, to drought and cold. And many of these are as a result of developments in sports turf. And if you think about it, you know, when you watch sport on the television, you nearly always notice the condition of the grass tennis court or the football pitch. Mm -hmm.